While there are many ways to look for a person of interest, my methods primarily revolve around my pen testing skills and my technical expertise. So get ready for a roller coaster ride of useful information as I show you the next level of open source intelligence. What I won't be talking about today is everything that OSINT consists of, all the basics like Google, dorking, people search websites, there are hundreds of those, uh, image metadata analysis, all the hundreds or thousands of breached databases, uh, social media accounts, there's an entire field on OSINT just on digging deep into social media. Uh, there's plenty of government records uh, you can look through, especially in the US, and I won't be touching on the dark web either. A lot of things I won't be touching on, uh, but what I will be talking about is some of the skill sets that I bring to uh, this field of uh, OSINT. To understand better where these skill, skill sets come from, uh, it's good to know a little bit about my background. Um, I come from a very hardcore network uh, design uh, background, um, doing routing switching, a lot of coding. Um, I transitioned into an ethical hacker, being a pen tester, uh, started doing things a little bit more legally, um, doing a lot of social engineering, whether phishing, wishing, or in person. Um, today I consult for organizations, small and large, uh, as a virtual chief information security officer. I also advise on privacy as I do OSINT investigations to find people and to, and to catch the bad guys. Um, some of the things uh, that my family members, uh, when they don't understand the technical side of this, the column on the right is how I ex explain it to them. I'm the good guy. Uh, before I start, I just want to throw this out there that everything we do as OSINT professionals revolves around covering your tracks. So OPSEC or operational security is absolutely important. Everything you see on the list here, uh, we need to practice. Without these in place, we can't start our investigations. We need to protect ourselves before we, uh, before we inadvertently expose uh, our footprints. A lot of the th these things for the purposes of today's demo uh, I may not be using, so don't judge me, but in the real life scenario, I will uh, pay special attention to these. So enough of slides, um, let's get started. So in order to start an investigation, you need some seed info. Um, in my case, the seed info, let's look at a hypothetical, hypothetical scenario, an actual scenario. The only information we have is uh, there's a Tesla parked in the parking lot of a university, Northwestern University, who owns it. That's all the information we have. We don't have a name, a phone number, anything. Uh, how do you go about starting your investigation is if all you know is a type of vehicle and the university it's parked in. So let's say it's parked in the, uh, the faculty parking area. So thinking outside the box is big and knowing where to find information. I know that there's a data breach called the Park Mobile data breach, and there is some data in it around email addresses and vehicles. So let's look that up first. So I do a rip grep, a faster way of doing grep. So I'm gonna search through this file that I have, the Park Mobile data breach, which is almost five gigabytes. And I'm going to search for everything that has at Northwestern EDU in it, and the Park Mobile data breach, and let's see what it finds. It found a lot of email addresses associated uh, with that university and a lot of details. Let's narrow it down a little bit more. Let me cancel the search. This shows you how many people use their corporate email IDs for an app that helps you park your car. But let's, let's stack on you know, the word Tesla next to it so it searches for both. In, conjunc in conjunction. I got exactly one hit. I got an email address in this uh, DRK and I know that this person has a Tesla and I got a bunch of um, license plate numbers, probably 10, 15 of these. Um, so let's see which one is his or hers. Um, so now I have an email address. Let's take this further and simply Google it. 
when you google this email address it tells you the person's full name uh, cl click through click on that link and I've preloaded some of these tabs because sometimes um, they'll fail or may not load right or on my VPN um, so for the sake of demo let's go to the next tab here so when you click on that first link I already now know enough information about this through people search websites I have a phone number um, I know he's a doctor um, it, uh, the, there's a website here uh, it says MD on his title so he's likely a doctor and an address here again now that I know some information I will dig deeper I know he's a doctor so there's um, a, a nationwide database for their their license um, I'll I simply searched his name on this database so I'll, I'll go here let me go back a little I pre-populated this so NPI records are doctor's records all in the US I could do it this way or the conventional way I did this was uh, go in my health insurance website and search for doctors it, it gives you a little bit more information around it so similar information I get so at least I'm verifying now that this is an official record it's not some people search website that can be manipulated or disinformation can be spread this is uh, an actual uh, healthcare uh, record uh, for this person the address here is different it has a suite next to it so this is um, a clinic's address and probably an office phone number but at least I know the person's full three names middle initial and he's legit so I take the other address I had here the 751 this is likely his home address and I put it in Google Street View uh, this is that address not a lot of information but remember I was looking for that car does he own this car or not or at least do I am I lucky enough to see it parked on the street um, not in this view but what you can do is go back in history on Google Street View and let's look at a 2018 view of the same thing almost immediately I spot the Tesla here in the, in the center and I zoom into it I can tell it's a Florida license plate again this is information that is geo specific geography specific so someone not in the US may not recognize it instantly they may need to do a little bit more research but I can kind of see the orange uh, uh, in, the, in the center that's uh, a Florida plate and I can see the last two numbers do, Google didn't do a great job in, in, in masking that out it says 67 let's go back to this data breach here and there is a 67 right here in the license plate DJY F67 let's take this plate now and run it through another um, OSINT tool which is this database of vehicles um, so you you put in a plate here so that was this plate number you look for the state this is vehiclehistory.com and you hit search and if you get lucky um, you find it so I found that exact Tesla I found the VIN number and I can take the VIN number further I also found it had 53,000 miles was sold for $45,000 in 2020 so some vehicle history the plate is the same but if I keep going further into the pictures I actually see a, a map here and the map shows Florida in it so some of my information is now uh, correlating and also in the top bar you see the profile username DRK or Dr. K and that is our person of interest so very quickly I got a lot of information on this person just through an alternate means of, of searching I can also then go to a site like weigel.net and under the Bluetooth section search for maybe you know the car Bluetooth uh, beacon that it's sending out in this case let me just make up a name you know Tesla Model S Jarvis let's query this so any device with a Bluetooth name of this within you know this map search that I have here uh, is going to show up and basically tell me where it was spotted so all these Bluetooth beacons were spotted you know all over the US if you know the exact one of the person you can actually pinpoint where they've been um, or where they are based on the date uh, over here so another way besides just Wi-Fi um, uh, searching you can also search for Bluetooth um, again this is crowdsource data so may not be accurate um, but um, continuing on with this uh, you can always look at people search websites like advanced background checks and try to look for a date of birth 
um, it shows me you know the how old this person is but says for privacy reasons we don't reveal full date of birth uh, which is fine let's keep moving on uh, fast people search same person uh, scroll down and it'll actually show you uh, September 1942 so it gave me two out of the three variables and this is interesting because if my goal is to get the full date of birth of a person there are other ways I, I know enough information about a person one other piece that I would use are government records to verify information so let's say a voter record like the Massachusetts website for um, voter registration I can look up people by their first name last name full date of birth and a zip code if I have all of these things it'll give me more information who they voted for and, and stuff like that and an address so all of this is confirmed and verified information and that's very important uh, when you're when you're doing OSINT you can't trust the information that you're presented with you have to verify it so in this case let's pick another target I don't want to dox the same person um, so let's uh, l let's pick this person here so uh, William Francis Galwin if I put in his name here I don't know his date of birth but guess what he's a popular person likely um, Google his name his full date of birth shows up September 17th uh, his zip code uh, is the next thing we need uh, a people search website will show it's 02135 so I have everything I need about him but let's say I didn't this is where I fire up my hacking tools um, like um, Burp Suite and within Burp Suite I open up that same page and I enter the information here and I enter the zip code here what was it zero two one three five zero two one three five and I hit search here and int intercept is offered and let's let me turn on intercept so it's going to intercept this request so it didn't really search yet it paused here so I have this request here now I'm going to modify some of the things here to search for the missing uh, items let's say I didn't know the date of birth so let's send this to intruder I go in intruder and I mark some positions that I need to know so let's say you know uh, I did not know the day of birth let's clear all these things here let's go back and so the day of birth here is 17 let's put um, a variable around this this number let's say I didn't know it was 17 I was just guessing so I have 30 tries to get this right or I could automate the process using uh, burp suite now under payloads I would go and say uh, let's let's cycle through uh, all the numbers from 1 to 30 and in steps of 1 and decimal numbers minimum integer integer digits 1 maximum 2 and fractions zero zero it gives you an example here of what the output would look like and I can start my attack so before I do that let's go under options you can run a grep match and let me I'm doing this fast because I've done this quite a few times and I want to match for everything that says not found because when I do find something it will stand out so now I have everything let's run this um, attack so it's it's basically going to run through all the different iterations it's going to submit the form with different values of day and as it does this it shows me the length of the packet and I'm looking for an anomaly I, I'm looking for something that stands out if I click on any one of these it shows me what it's submitted let me render the form here and it'll show me what the form looked like so since it was an incorrect entry it said voter registration information not found and that's what I'm searching for this item right here with the checkbox uh, was actually found and it has a different length uh, a, a byte length here versus the rest the rest are very close to each other this one is kind of the odd one out and when I rendered this it says yes voter registration status was basically found and it gives me this person's full date of birth so in case I didn't know it it's gonna try 30 attempts and if I didn't know other variables I would put those in as well and it would increase the number of events 
but I can use a tool like this just to automate the process and verify this information. Now I know since a government record exists of this information, this is 100% uh, verified. So I not only do I know the full date of birth, but another missing piece of information was the address that's now there. A lot of people, you know, write their true addresses on voting forms, whereas on social media websites, they'll they'll try to hide it or, or uh, spread some disinformation. But on government records, it's uh, highly likely that this is your actual address. So very quickly using, you know, hacking tools like this, you can dig through OSINT scenarios uh, much faster and actually verify the information uh, that you have. Uh, taking this one step further, now that I have more pieces of information, let's take that email address back that we found initially and then just run it through have I been pwned just to, three, just to see are there other data breaches we can check. So it quickly shows me it's part of so many other data breaches. Each breach will have its own unique piece of information um, and I can just dig further and further. It shows me the Park Mobile data breach which I just checked through had a license plate number in it. Since I know this information exists, I kind of, I know shortcuts on how to find it um, fast. But uh, even passwords and stuff, it, passwords are not what we're looking for, it's all the other information. But if I take the same email address and run it through a password breach or a website like this, breach directory.tk, um, and just put in this uh, email address, I very quickly get uh, redacted passwords of this person. And if I take one of these redacted passwords, um, it shows me the SHA-1 hash. And as a pen tester, I know, hey, a SHA-1 can be reversed uh, pretty quickly, especially when I know half the characters. So instead of you know finding the actual password, I'll quickly go back to Kali Linux. I will go to um, Hashcat, um, which is right here. So I'll, I'll use Hashcat, I'll do uh, a dash M100, that's for uh, SHA-1, um, A3 is a brute force attack, and that's the hash that I got from that website. Now I'll, I'll put a mask on it, I know the first four digits, but I don't know the remainder of the digits, I'll brute force the remainder of the digits. And I press enter, and usually Hashcat takes a while, but when you know, once you know half the variables, um, let's see how long this actually takes. It took a couple of seconds um, to actually figure out the password. It cracked it and the password was right here. Um, Dr. Carlin, so Dr. Carlin. Hopefully he changed his password. I'm pretty sure he did. Uh, but that's a very quick way of reversing a hash using Hashcat. And that's the first place I would go to before you even digging deeper. Now, a lot of the times passwords will reveal much more than just uh, what was here. They may reveal uh, a second person's name, your dog's name, your spouse's name, or something secret to you. Or you can then take each individual password, that unique password that you got, if it's unique, and then do a reverse search on just passwords to find out other hidden accounts uh, for the person. So that's one other way to do it. Um, but then I would take the phone number and do a reverse carrier search on this. And now I want to verify that this phone number is this person's phone number. So I spoof my name, uh, my, my caller ID, and I call T-Mobile and I search what number, you know, T-Mobile's customer care, and I give T-Mobile a call. And when I call them spoofing this person's number, here's what I hear. So T-Mobile confirmed this is that person. Um, moving forward, you know, more Google searches reveal the same person's name, but that same website, if I look at the archive uh, Wayback Machine, it'll actually show me a middle name, Simeon, right here. So I can get more information this way. I take the same person's name and go to classmates.com. I see a yearbook entry and I click on the yearbook now it's going to show me a paywall and I can't really click on any of these um, but that was what page 54 I believe but it'll actually show me the first page so first few pages I can always right click on any of these pages open image and new URL and visit that URL and modify you know, the file that's here 
this is JPEG file number two. If I go, was it 54? I get the high resolution image of that same Mark person. And this guy is pretty much the same as the person here. So again, digging deeper. So there's there's a lot you can do. And I, I said I wouldn't touch social media, but let's 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 take a quick example of one of the hacking tools in social media. Let's say there's this person, Instagram uh, dot com slash Michal. Um, I want to know more about this person. A lot of the things are masked here. So let's go to a tool call. Um, so let me demonstrate two real quick tools for you here. Uh, so one of the tools is to Tatis. Uh, I put in the name Michal here and I put in a, um, this, this random string here. There's, there's entire directions here to how to use this Instagram tool. But when I run this tool, it actually gives me redacted email addresses, uh, one email address and a phone number plus four, four, that's UK, which I did not get from the social media profile itself. So this is from using APIs. Same thing, I use a, this, another tool by the same person called Holihi, and I enter in an email address, and it actually give, it runs through multiple social media accounts and spits out some information regarding where this account was used. So once this tool is, is done, it'll actually give me more social media accounts to dig through right here. A lot of these did not show up in regular searches like Garmin and stuff. So now I have more points of interest uh, to go through. Uh, social media will al also tell you other stuff. If you go back in time on Twitter, it will give you, you know, location or the person's real name. In this case, the person only had his first name on Twitter. Um, this is not me. This is somebody who got the name before me. But in, in this scenario, I now know the person's full name because it's on the Wayback Machine. Um, look at Brian Krebs account and it shows you used Twitter for iPad. Um, dig a little bit deeper using tools like social bearing and it shows you this person, uh, Brian Krebs uses an iPhone, an iPad and Twitter for web. So now I know a device that this person has. Uh, very quickly, if you go into LinkedIn and do a search for um, you know, linkedin.com slash in slash Jane Doe, um, you get some information, but if I use an API from People Data Labs, um, PDI, I can actually put in this profile there and see what they have on her. And now I get a LinkedIn ID, which I could have gotten by right clicking to, but then I get Facebook uh, profiles, phone numbers, uh, a whole bunch of uh, other stuff here uh, to utilize as well. Free APIs. Um, so very quickly you realize there's a lot of tools at your disposal it's how you use them how quickly and how efficient you are at these tools will determine what amount of information um, you can you know, get out of these um, that linkedin id that i found just to put a little perspective on it if you just search the linkedin data breach with that uh, same id you are going to find um, Let's see what you find. You find a lot of IDs which are uh, similar to this. Let's stop this search and narrow it down a little bit. Let's put a comma next to it and a slash B f to create a boundary. So that LinkedIn ID, which we got from Jane Doe's account, equates to this one email address. So that's how you use some of the breaches and the tools to kind of real quickly dig deep. Whew, let me take a breather here. There's a lot to talk about there, but let's uh, kind of wrap this up. So here's where we started, and this is where we want to be. We started with a piece of information about a Tesla at a university, um, and we quickly went into a breach. A breach turned into an email. Uh, we found an email address, and then we find, found all this information that I showed and you know things in white here are all the hacking tools that we used you know hashcat to find more details on a password caller id spoofing to verify uh, and most of these things are by the way to verify like burp suite was to verify a date of birth uh, and to find it as well uh, url manipulation to bypass some of the paywalls uh, tools in uh, social media tools like holihi 
to Tatis, uh, I'm probably butchering the names here, but these tools are used to dig deeper into further information. You know, on Facebook, just look for when people started saying happy birthday to the person that kind of verifies what their day of birth is at least. Um, but using people data labs, open APIs uh, to figure out other accounts, using LinkedIn to find member IDs and breaches, uh, types of device used to kind of profile the person better, using Weigel or uh, looking back in time on the archive, uh, archive.org. There's a lot of information you can use just by using some of the tools that weren't really made um, to for people hunting, but you can absolutely use this on top of your uh, OSINT, uh, regular OSINT skill set. Now where you want to be here eventually is, 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 a, is a chart like this where you start off with a profile, dig deeper into all the different elements uh, and just keep growing this chart little by little. And that's basically what what will uh, provide that larger profile of the person and then start connecting the different pieces together. It's the connecting the dots that really uh, matters and make, uh, puts your investigation in front of uh, the rest. So ingredients to success. A lot of the things you saw me do here uh, require planning, you know, a, a lot of extreme OPSEC, thinking outside the box, knowing what tools exist, so that you can dig deeper for that information. But to me, what really defines this success is uh, persistence and perseverance. Keep trying, eventually people will make a mistake and they will leave evidence and, and perseverance, leave no stone unturned. A quick, simple example I can give you of this is uh, try all the tools at your disposal, useful or useless. Like, you know, here's Michael Basil's tools here um, and in one of these search tools, like let's say I was looking for a name, John Doe, uh, I'll populate all. There's all these websites I can look for, simply clicking on submit all, watch how many tabs open up. I can't even look at this, it's like flashing lights. But all of these tabs are now opening up for me to go through, browse, and check one by one, did I miss anything? This is called being thorough. Sure, it, it takes a lot of time, but all I need is one hit. Um, 20 tabs open up. If one of them has the information I'm looking for, that's success. I'll close the rest of it. So you have to spend the time and the resources um, to go through uh, all of uh, your, uh, um, all the tools in your tool set. And then obviously have that positive attitude. And I can almost guarantee you that with a lot of patience, uh, with the perseverance and persistence, if, if you continue this, um, you will find uh, your target or your person of interest. Thank you and have a great rest of the evening.